Hey, Saints Row the third, barnstorming. We are on numbers 11 through 15 with the number troublesome number 14 to deal with. And because I've done it before, here's number 11. Um, I knew how to angle the helicopter, but uh, it still took me about 10 or so tries to get it to pop. And uh, this one, number 12, gave me a little bit of trouble. Kind of keep hitting that tower there. Oh. But I believe you can get this barnstormer going back this way. I think I hit this tower here. Okay, but then uh, the barnstormer kicks in right there. So, there. Number 12. Number 13, it's right through the catwalks here. Nothing too hard. Okay, now number 14. I could cut out some of the failed attempts here, but it wasn't that many. And uh, just to give you an idea how tough this can be, um, in the guidebook it tells you to go straight through it but the barnstormer never came up I kinda came up with this one on my own I uh, just kinda angled it and it was the one that kinda gave me the most barnstorming you know, but it just wouldn't get to you know max out three and I kept doing it this way and I got close but uh, I think the deal is, is like once you get into it you can't really move the helicopter a whole lot get at the pop and sometimes I over uh, I'm lined up but then I'll kind of compensate a little bit and then I'll wind up hitting it so but it's a tight angle for sure anybody that's played uh, Saints Row 2 can definitely attest to this that they got the helicopters right in this game. Um, the mechanics of the helicopter were pretty rough in Saints Row 2. Uh, that little Thompson helicopter, <laughs> you'll wind up crashing that little helicopter many times. And uh, in Saints 3, the helicopter is just more forgiving. I mean, if that was Saints 2 right there, I probably would have lost the helicopter. But they definitely got the mechanics of the helicopter down right. This is a nice little helicopter to do the barnstorming with and handles well. And it's small, so it's all pluses. Yeah, that's how I winded up getting this. Um, I kept getting, you know, into the threes, and I was like, what's that little trick to just to get it to pop? And uh, just got to work it a little bit. I've tried coming back the other way through it, nothing. This is the only way that I found getting through this number 14, real pain in the rear side here. So, not that time. I remember when I finally got it, I spent, uh, I'd say, a couple hours working on it. My buddy went off and did other things. He's like, you still working on that barnstorming? I'm like, yep, I'm going to get it. So hopefully this will uh, help you out. Oh, man, so frustrating. Not as frustrating as the unique jumps. Those can be uh, very frustrating. Just so much the locations of the jump, and then they just got like debris and visible barriers that you hit as you're trying to build up speed to the ramp. Just stupid things like that. And uh, it could have made this one a lot easier too. OK. 
Okay. I'll make it this time. I'm going to have to cut this out, but uh, I think you get the general idea. It's, uh, it's not an easy one to get. There we go. Bam. Yeah, if he smokes cigars, that would be a tie for him, because that is one annoying barnstorming right there. Like I say, the rest of their uh, catwalk, uh, just get to them and uh, do them. And then, uh, like I said, you know, earning respect is always a good thing. I think I'm at level 31. And uh, by that time of the game, you know, you're you know, pretty ranked up. A lot of upgrades. Um, you know, I got the dual pistols and submachine guns and all that. It makes playing the game a lot funner. And uh, me and my co art partner, Demetri Priest, are going to redo all the gang locations, survivals, and the collectibles too. But uh, let's get a look at the five locations here. So we can get off to the next five. Okay, that's 11 through 15. Off to the next set.